explode their volcano, there is at least 100 times more than that waiting to come out. Mm-hmm. And as you know, and as you know, uh, there's also volcanoes forming off the coast under the Pacific Ocean. And as the, uh, the lava hits the salt water, it creates a toxic chemical. And that's why people who are swimming in the water in the Hawaiian Islands are getting skin irritations, asthma, and, and, and so on. It's not a healthy place to be. But the, the, if you want to call it good news is that the Hawaiian Islands are rising up. They're not sinking. They're rising up. Because basically... It's the center of the Lemurian continent that sank so many thousands of years ago, and now it's coming back up. So basically right. it's going to be a very big landmass uh, in a little bit. Uh, but <laughs> and when I, the, the process is going to be a little dangerous for everybody. So well, we've got a few on. minutes left. Why don't you talk? We've got about 30 minutes left, 29 actually. Okay. Do you want to talk a little bit metaphysically or esoterically about the Akashic field in Lemuria and, La- and Atlantis? Because everyone I know, I have had have a memory. I've even got music I wrote about being uh, Atlantis Oracle. So check it out on uh, YouTube, Stuart. Atlantis Oracle, that's me. And you'll hear some of my weird music with Steve Huckabay. <laughs> Steve Halpern wasn't oh. on that one, but I'm going to do something hopefully with him someday. But uh, anyway, give us your rendition of why some of us have past lives and we're back with memories of Beyond the Veil. Because apparently we're coming in conscious. I never questioned, because you know Lemuria wasn't Lemuria. It, that was from the lemurs. It was called Mu. So give me your idea prior to all the land splitting. It was all one big planet with one big land mass. But do you have memories before or when it split up? How do you go into that past life? Well, uh, <laughs> and I think <laughs> Janet knows this because it's in my Blue mm-hmm. Blood book and my True World History book. Plus, I have plenty of videos on YouTube. I have like 400 videos on YouTube, and so many of them are about just what you said. Now, what I'm going to tell you may not corroborate exactly with what, uh, what's out there, so to speak. But I will tell you that in the very, very beginning, uh, this planet was covered in ocean. There was no land masses. And the Earth That's was a planet. That's way back Mm-hmm. It was all water. Yeah. It was a water plane. A of history in a very, yeah, I'm going to give a lot of history in a very short time because Earth was the second position. It was a water planet. Mars and the planet Maldip was the ones that was colonized by the Lyrian refugees. The reptilians sent an ice comet into the solar system that disrupted many of the outer planets, destroyed Maldip, uh, ripped the atmosphere off of Mars, and then went into rotation around the Earth which polarized oceans and caused land masses to appear and the ice caps to form. And then the ice comet became, pushed the Earth to the third position and the ice comet took up the second position and became the planet Venus. That's a whole other story. But meanwhile, the Earth was uncolonizable and the reptilians drove the moon into orbit around our planet. The moon is an artificial object. It is not from our solar system. It is older than the Earth, and it is hollow just like the Earth is. Anyway, the Repillians then colonized the largest continent, which is was in what is now the Pacific, and it was in Uri, and you, whatever they you want to call it, depending on the culture. But I'm going to tell you that Lemuria was colonized by androgynous Repillian beings. They were not humans or mammalians. It was a lot of thousands of years later that the mammalians or humans colonized Atlantis, which was in what is now the Pacific Ocean. And so mammalians and reptilians should are not designed to live in the same environment in the same location. And so there was wars, there was battles. This is described in the Hindu Vedas about the uh, even describing nuclear war. 100,000 years ago, and so on. And so ultimately, the uh, Atlantean technology, which was able to move the morphogenetic grid of the Earth, caused Lemuria, or Mu, to sink into the upper crust 
of the planet, and water came flooding in and created the Pacific Basin and the Ring of Fire that exists now and the Hawaiian Islands that exist now and so on. And so then the Atlanteans continued on with their manipulations. And, and contrary to what people think, the Atlanteans were not love, light, and peace. They did hybridization experiments. They, did, they were warfaring people. They occupied Egypt and Greece, and they were very war- manipulative and aggressive. But ultimately, they destroyed themselves in 10,500 B.C. And so what we have now on the surface of the planet are the remnants of the colonies of Atlantis and of Lemuria and of the mixture. And, and, and I should say, before all of that happened, the Lemurians and the Atlanteans tried to create a peace treaty where they said they would create a third race of a synthesis, synthesis between the Lemurians and the Atlanteans. And that's why it says in Genesis, let us create man in our image. All of the Bible, especially Genesis, it's plural. There's no singular God. It's a group effort to create mankind. And the deal was that they took an androgynous reptilian body and they added mammalian characteristics to it and separated it into male and female components, which is the story of Adam and Eve uh, allegorically. And that's why we have human beings on this planet, a reptilian brainstem, a reptilian lymphatic system. We have a mammalian heart with four chambers, but with reptilian three arteries leading into it. We have skin that wrinkles and peels and so on and so on. Human beings are basically an artificial race which is a synthesis of reptilian and mammalian. And that is why humans on this planet have such deep psychological problems because they (laughs) they have no self of, they have no self identity. They don't they're human, if they're reptilian, if they're mammalian, they don't know who the heck they are. See? So that's really the story of mankind in in a very, very short version. Um, But anyone who's interested can read my books uh, about this and get the more detail. Well, I mentioned Good in the job. beginning, we, Jason, Jesus and Emmanuel is in your description here on the show. So why do you think he was put here uh, supernaturally and to marry, or do you think that's all BS and Jesus was just a Hebrew guy <laughs> known as, you know, Joshua oh or Yeshua? Well, I'm going to tell you something, Teresa, that this, I, I do it a week-long class every September. It's called the September Spectacular. And this Ah. September, I'm doing a special class just on that topic. But I'm going to tell you that I would suggest, if you can still find it, it's not available much anymore, there's a a document called the Talmud of Emmanuel, which describes how alien intervention uh, took a genetic and manipulated them to create the Christ figure, who, by the way, was a twin, not a singular figure, and implanted into the womb of Mary. And that's why it was called a, 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 a virgin birth. It was just basically an implantation. And it gets complicated, but in ancient Hebrew belief system and, and, and information, there are twin messiahs. There's not one. There's a political messiah, and there's a religious messiah. And the one, uh, Emmanuel, uh, that people worship now, he was the political messiah, and I'm going to talk about that in in my September class. But he was married to Mary Magdalene, and they had three children. And uh, Mary uh, and uh, Peter were at odds with each other. It gets very, very complicated, but... uh, I'm just going to say it. Peter had a thing for Emmanuel, and he was jealous of Mary, and he didn't like that Jesus was married to her. And he tried to kill her, and that's why in the Last Supper painting, you see Peter with a knife trying to stab Mary Magdalene sitting next to the Christ figure. And so she had to escape. So, um, was Jesus the Emmanuel bisexual? Because yes. somebody years ago told me that, that he met, yes. that Jesus was bisexual. And uh, I yes. didn't believe her. But she remembered being with him, and and uh, that was years ago. 
Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, what do we do with yeah. all these people that have memory codes? Soul coding is not DNA coding. So many people right. have uh, fractals of memories. Janet is Inanna. You know, I have a memory of ISIS, no. but at the same time, no. Inanna in another language. Uh, you're not Inanna? No. <laughs> well, I thought you anyway. said your memory was Inanna. No, not Inanna. Well, what? what? I, I identify as a fractal of Nima, which is the peacemaker. Nima. Inanna. Inanna was like a little brat that the, you know, she started world. She started the the war back then, and that's why Sodom and Gomorrah got blown up. No, I, I, I have nothing to do with Inanna's energy. But that we're looking at the fractal experience with all these different secret space programs. So coding. Yeah. They're talking about soul coding and fractals and having archetypal memories and, uh, you know, that's why people uh-huh. are fighting, oh, I'm Jesus. No, well, we're I'm dealing Jesus. with it, so. Well, let's well, let him tell it. us. Yeah, go ahead. He surely, well, he surely has to deal soul with it. Fractals. Is this a well, per- yeah. what's, what's going on? Go ahead. Yeah, memory is chemically stored and it becomes genetically induced so that you can actually inherit memory. So, Teresa, if what I understand what you said is correct, because you could have a memory, let's say, of, a, of an incident that's now become genetically stored, and then you can pass that on to your children. However, Great. decades and eons of time, there could be tens of thousands of people with that memory, but it wasn't their experience. You see, so there's a difference between genetic memory and soul personality memory. Course, Thank you. you. I know that, and I need clarification mm-hmm. because everybody I talk to, no, I was with Jesus. I'm like, well, I was Jesus's daughter. So what does that mean? Twelve years old. I remember mm-hmm. putting my hand in a stone, and it went into the stone. Therefore, I could come back and find myself. And I don't have the money to go traipsing around trying to find proof that I was here on the planet. Not that I care, mm-hmm. because it's hard enough living in this 3D body. But those <laughs> memories are important mm-hmm. to some people. It keeps them from killing themselves, because they know mm-hmm. they're more than, mm-hmm. and they're trying to find their part. So I don't want to discourage them from trying to tell me who they were when Jesus was walking the planet, because everybody has a Jesus story. I walked with Jesus. Well, yeah, so did I, mm-hmm. and so did everybody else I meet. It's not a new story. It's just that we let yes, you one, live one who you want to be. One other thing I'll- Yeah, but I want to add one other thing to that is that the Illuminati take these inherited memories or what they call the oversoul matrix of the personality and all your different uh, lifetimes and experiences, and they base alter personalities in your programming matrix, which are based on them, so that they can invoke a personality or an alter personality uh, to come forward and take control of the body based on your genetic history and memory, you see, even though it may not have been your personal experience. And that's how they create programming alters. And I talk about Well, that. my husband wouldn't discuss Jesus. He was, he was very, he was the son of a preacher man or the son of a preacher man. But these aliens, mm. ETs, I don't know what you're going to call them, the ones that we were off planet with, me and my husband mm-hmm. worked underground for the government and we worked off planet. And I don't know if it was for the government. I just know that that maybe it was for the extraterrestrials. I think we worked for mm-hmm. them, and we were put here. That I, I believe I was them before I was me here. But maybe you can mm-hmm. explain that. Where does the soul coding in your uh, logical mind or your history on the planet? You know, do you have a Jesus story, and and do you think that you may have one up there with the universal beings like I do? <laughs> Teresa, you're asking me such questions. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to know you quick. I don't have much time on the planet. <laughs> oh, my God. Your head will explode if you get to know me so quickly. But I will tell you, in fact, it's interesting you mention that because in the Montauk Project, and I wrote about this in my Montauk Alien Connection book, I was sent back by the handlers in Montauk to kill the Christ figure. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do it. And so I was punished for that. Um, Were you Lazarus? The second time. No. In the history of of the Bible? No. Tell tell her the story because she didn't read the book. Go ahead. Yeah. (laughs) Then they sent me back a, a second time to extract blood 
from his foot while the, he was on the cross so that the youth yeah. 